Hi, I'm George Self. This video is one in a series designed to help with Logisim Evolution Digital Logic Labs. This is Lab 11, Processor. The purpose of this lab is to develop a rudimentary central processor unit and discover how code like that generated by a compiler can do work in a physical circuit. This is a complex circuit, so let's just dive in. A processor is composed of several components. For this simple processor, we only have three. There's an arithmetic logic unit, a general register, and then a control. Now, frankly, these three components by themselves are not very astounding. There really isn't any new digital logic going on in any of these. The trick is using the control circuit to control what's going on with the ALU and the registers. Let's open up the AL ALU circuit and take a look. This ALU is much simpler than the one we built in an earlier lab. It only has three arithmetic functions and four uh, logic functions along with a constant zero potential output. What is output from this circuit is controlled by this multiplexer and that is controlled by a signal on the ALU control uh, input. There are four bit control input. Three of those four bits is used to control what comes out of this MUX. The other one is used to enable either the buffer or the accumulator. So let me explain how all of this works. In order to add, say, two numbers, we would put one of those numbers in the buffer. Then the second number would simply come in on the data in line. We would set the multiplexer to output the value of this plus, and that would go into the accumulator to eventually be read to the data out port. Going back to the main circuit, you can see the ALU has a data in port. There's a control circuit coming in, a clock, of course, and there's a data out. Let's take a look at the general registers. All processors, all central processor units need some general registers. Uh, typically, there are couple of dozen of them. In this particular little processor, we only have four registers. These are used to hold values that, that need to be temporarily stored as the processor works. You'll see how that works when we actually exercise this processor. We have four registered, numbered R0 to R3. The data in is fed into each of these registers. There's a uh, decoder that's used to determine which of these registers are active and that decoder is controlled by this register select. And of course there's a clock signal. The output is controlled by a multiplexer and that determines what's going out of this register unit. Again, there was nothing very astounding with either of these sub-circuits. Let's take a look at the control sub-circuit. The control sub-circuit is extremely simple. There's just a M code that stands for microcode input that goes into a control register where it's held. And then on the next clock pulse, that is broken apart and fed out into the ALU control, the register control, and a D-Bus control. D-Bus is the data bus. Now the D-Bus control operates this multiplexer. Uh, th this multiplexer then would either feed the signal from the ALU, the registers, an immediate uh, load, load immediate, or just a constant zero into this data bus. And the data bus then feeds into the ALU and the general register. So this is what's controlling what's on the data bus. Now all of this looks really complicated. So let's just do some stuff with it and see how it works. 
The first thing I want to do is put, put a value in this load immediate register and copy that into R0, into register 0. So, let me just put something random in here. I'll say 8 in the load immediate register. This is, this is going to be loaded into something in our circuit. And by the way, in a real CPU, you wouldn't have a load immediate register in here like this. This would be connected to RAM, and we would be pulling some value out of RAM into the CPU. Uh, but for this simple circuit, we'll just load it manually. Our controller then, we will put a 1, a 0 that controls the data bus and it tells the data bus, take this input and put it out on the data bus. The next three bits are the register controls. So this tells the, uh, the processor, let's load this puppy into uh, register zero. And finally, the ALU control is one, zero, zero, zero. Well, let's just process this and let's see if it worked. Now with Logisim Evolution, if we just click the uh, general register now, nothing uh, shows up there. Well, it does show an eight. However, I will tell you what we generally want to do is use this second button that we've never used yet in this lab or in this uh, in this entire course this actually sh shows the simulation stopped and frozen in time right now and this is what you would normally use whenever you have a clock pulse going on so i open up the general register now and it does show that there's an eight in r0 none of the others have anything and notice the data bus also has eight. Oh, well, let's try something else. Let's copy some value and just for the heck of it, I'll say four. And we want to copy this into register one. Well, again, the uh, data bus controller will be one zero. That way the load immediate uh, port will be read out onto the data bus. We want this to go into 101. This would be register uh, number one. One, zero, one, zero, one. And again, one, zero, zero for the ALU. And we'll click that. Let's take a look at the general register again. And notice now R1 has a four in there. In your lab manual, you'll see that there are a number of processes that you can use to copy the load immediate to the ALU, or to increment the value on the data bus, or to add uh, register zero and register one and store the result in register zero. This takes three cycles, three clock cycles to make that happen. Oh, first we store the value of, of R1 in the ALU. We add R0 and R1 into the accumulator and then we move the accumulator back out into R0. We can subtract R1 from R0 and store the result in R0. This takes four clock cycles to do. We can copy R0 to R1. This takes four clock cycles. And finally, we can swap R0 and R1. This takes 12 clock cycles. Now, if you've ever done any programming at all in microcode or machine code, machine language, um, you might recognize what we are doing here is literally just setting up all of the various uh, multiplexers and gates and control circuits so that data are moved from one location to another throughout this circuit. And this is how a CPU works. In your lab manual, I've taken a number of these 
codes and kind of put them together into a program. And this program would, in this case, swap R0 and R1. And this is what a compiler would create. So whenever you do some kind of assembly coding and then you compile it, this is what the compiler creates. And what this creates then is nothing more than code that will that will control various uh, multiplexers and, and control buffers and other things to make this circuit actually work. Now I've ended this particular lab with a note about uh, high-level programming languages. If you program in a language like C++ or Java, and then you compile that, what your compiler is doing is taking all of your high-level language, oh, if, then, else, or loops, or whatever, and it's running all of that through its internal processes to eventually end up with microcodes and those microcodes will do nothing more than turn on or off various multiplexers and things in the CPU. That's about it for this lab. It is complex, it's very challenging, but when you complete it you will understand exactly what goes on inside a central processing unit and what happens when you compile a high-level language like Java into machine code that will actually operate your computer. I'll be seeing you online.